This morning, we are unveiling a very special train. As you know, Via Rail is completely changing its fleet of trains. These are trains that are very old, as you can see here. We passed by these trains quickly because they are part of the past. Now, we are looking to the future. By next summer in 2025, all the trains operating in the corridor between Quebec and Windsor will be completely replaced by these modern trains, which you will have a chance to visit today. People are already starting to use them, and we already have quite a few in service, but from now on, they will be more and more present, especially in the Quebec and Ottawa segment. And after that, it will be moving more towards Toronto and the southwest of Ontario to Windsor. To mark this special moment, we have a train that will be unique. It is the only train that will have this exterior design. The interior, of course, will be the same as the others, but the exterior will set it apart from the rest. We also wanted to mark this major change with a symbol that makes a nod to the past, the Turbo Train, one of the first models we had at Via Rail. Today, the occasion is about Quebec City to Windsor Corridor. But as you know, the federal government is committed to replacing all trains in the country over the next few years. So it's really a new page of history that we're working on. And so this morning, I have the pleasure of unveiling Lumi. Let me introduce you to Lumi, a yellow monochrome train. It's simple, but in the linearity of the landscape, obviously, it's going to be extremely striking. It's the only one and unique. There will be no other train that will have this exterior design. We want people, when their eyes come across Lumi, to both feel the excitement and to recognize the modernization here at Via Rail. Hello, I'm Arnaud Lacaz. I'm very happy to be with you today to unveil our new train, Lumi. So Lumi is the only train that will have the special livery, and it's made to stand out and accentuate Lumi. We have some good momentum right now, and it helps bring more and more people to take the train in Canada. It also gives a special wink to the old trains from VRL's past in the late 70s, early 80s, such as the Turbo Train. This train is unique. It will be the only one of the 32 new trains that will have this livery, and it will enter passenger service by the end of the summer. We just received it a few days ago, actually. Beyond the marketing aspect, what we also wanted to highlight, the great progress to date on this project. It's a project that started a few years ago, and today we have received a little more than half of the fleet. Lumi is the 18th train received, so we now have more than half of them here at VIA. So we wanted to highlight all the good work that has been done by the teams during all these years to make this possible. And the goal for us is to have the entire new fleet for the corridor by the end of next summer 2025, which means between Quebec, Montreal, Ottawa, Toronto, and Windsor. Later on, we will go inside the trains. Dean and Catherine will give you a presentation. The idea behind it is really to incite passengers to take the train.
Rebonjour, bienvenue euh, à bord du train cette fois-ci. Welcome on board uh, the new train. You have seen and likely felt it when entering this train. The special experience being offered, something that we put forward at the beginning of the program. We wanted to put emphasis on the passenger experience. I'm going to let Dean explain to you the different concepts, everything we put forward during these years of design. Dean is our Senior Manager for Product and Service Design at VIA. He's been working with us since the very beginning of the program. He helped us design and develop these new trains. Just to give you an idea of where we started, as Arnaud said, we started six years ago, six and a half actually, designing the interior of the trains, making sure that the customer experience was at the level of what passengers were looking for. But there was another key point, another key element, which was accessibility. VIA's accessibility was a major goal. So it is an accessible environment for everyone. But I won't talk much about it because Catherine is here to elaborate on the subject further. But on other points, I'm going to mention everything in terms of changes and improvements on the interiors that we have put in place. Just inside these nine square feet, we can see several elements that are different and that have been added or improved. First, information display screens have been introduced with these new trains. That gives us information about the speed, the distance, time to the next station, etc. We also now have luggage compartments that are open. They are no longer closed. There are no more doors, so they're much more accessible. And you will also notice that below the seats, there is space for suitcases, cages for animals, etc. So accessibility and space for carry-ons is much improved. We also received comments about being able to work in business class, but in a more private setting or space. So you now have this space here, which is a zone where you can work in a team of two, three, or four, but in a private setting with small walls. One thing I want to point out is the concept and interiors have won a prize for the best interiors in the industry for 2023 by an association called the Red Cabin Conference. We are very proud of that at VIA. Because we designed the trains to be much more accessible, the kitchens and galleys are much larger, so it benefits the employees who work on the trains as well. Another element which we can't see or feel right now as the train isn't moving is that these trains are much smoother than before. We introduced a touch of wood in the design, and in addition, inside the bathrooms, they have walls that have a backdrop to give the effect of a forest. The lighting in the train is also much brighter than before. The lighting that we designed for the kitchen and galleys is very different. It is a custom solution and design, especially for VIA. Overall, the atmosphere on board the train is much more welcoming. I will introduce you to Catherine, a colleague with whom I have been working with for years on the accessibility project at VIA. I travel the world and always hear praise on the efforts made by Catherine. Catherine, please take it away. Thank you, Dean. I want to say that I'm not alone in the accessibility team. There are several people working to make VIA more accessible. So, for the new train cars project, right from the start, we wanted to include people with disabilities in the design process. 
We brought people together with different types of disabilities from all over Canada because we wanted to have the best possible representation. When we brought them together, we gave them a blank page. We told them, what would you put in here? What would you like in a fully accessible train? And so, starting from nothing, these people made us proposals and expressed their needs. And we heard them. We started by making a first full-scale mock-up of the cabin. And there, they were very skeptical. They weren't sure if we were really going to integrate everything they asked for. And they were very surprised to see that 90% of the accessibility elements that they had asked for had been integrated into the concept. And we included them at every step of the process until the implementation of the project. And they were very satisfied to see how much they had been listened to and to see how VRL had implemented all the accessibility elements they had asked us for. I will present these different elements to you now. Here we are in the mobility spaces, two spaces, which can accommodate two people in a wheelchair mobility aid and who can travel face to face. If they have a travel companion, the companion can be seated on the other side of the aisle. And what's interesting here is that people don't have to travel in the direction of the train. So what that means is if the client prefers to be in that direction, they can do it. But on the other hand, and obviously not at the time of meals, but for the rest of the trip, they can be oriented the other way if desired. There are no restrictions on this choice, which is new. So here in the mobility assistance area, we have several elements. We have USB ports, a reading lamp, a call button for the staff. It's not like in a plane, so it's not to order a beer or a sandwich. It's more if the client needs assistance to get to the bathroom, or if you need a glass of water to take medication, it's really there for a need for help, but not an emergency. We also have an adjustable table. So depending on the size of the mobility device, because it can be of different heights, the tabletop can be adjusted. A popular request often asked for us is that people want to have access to their luggage quickly, especially people with reduced mobility who don't want to go to the other side of the car to get something in their bag. As such, we have a dedicated luggage space. One final thing you will notice, all the signs and all the indications are in Braille and embossed, something very helpful for our clients who have a visual impairment. This also includes the numbering of the seats, which is also in Braille and embossed. For the first time, we have a visual and auditory redundancy of all the messages that are made with the display screens. So for example, if a person has a visual or auditory limitation, they do not miss any of the announcements that are being made on board.